What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 Regulation C video. So today is going to be an interesting little discussion topic. Uh, and that is just the state of Regulation C and how I personally think that even though these ruins are big important Pokemon that are making waves in the metagame that are very important to how the format is being shaped, I, I don't think they're mandatory. You could make a case in regulation b or series two that you didn't actually need to run a paradox pokemon and while i don't think you need to at all uh, i will say that it's probably better to run one of them considering how valuable the tool they are in a lot of situations with how good sun is but regulation c feels like a different beast in that you really don't need to run a ruin pokemon which i'm not saying is bad i think that's actually really good uh, and i'm going to get into why i think that is uh, in this video so if you guys enjoy this standpoint in time do me a favor leave a like in the video subscribe to the channel and turn notifications because i bring you daily competitive pokemon content that's my comment question of the day which is why do you think you don't need to run a ruin pokemon do you think it's like worth it are you going to build with them or are you going to build without them I, I don't know i guess my question is are you going to be using them most of the time or not so yeah let's go ahead and get into this so what I'm going to use as my evidence for this claim that you really don't need to run a Ruin Pokemon uh, is actually the results of the first two regionals. So in the 2023 Sydney regionals, which happened the day before the 2023 Fort Wayne regionals, um, the calendar is completely wrong. This did not happen in February. Uh, you'll notice that there were 190 master players and throughout the entire tournament, almost every single team did have a Ruin. However, there are some exceptions. We have to look at um, just date. We're only been looking at like day two results here. Uh, and the one that I have pulled up here specifically is Lewis Daniels uh, team that has no ruins on it from this uh, event. We can see that the team is made up of Assault Vest Azumarill, Grim Snarl with Light Clay, Focus Sash Pelipper, Skeledurge, Amoongus, and uh, Assault Vest Terra Steel, or not Assault Vest, uh, Leftovers Terra Steel Iron Hands. Now, what I'm going to say here is that this team feels uniquely prepared to go up against basically any Ruin. Uh, something that I'll note is that uh, Azumarill pairs up positively into every single Ruin because obviously Ruins are Dark types. Uh, if, we look, if we look at all of them, uh, basically every single one of them gets annihilated by Assault Vest Azumarill. You can see that Ting Lu doesn't want to have to take a play rough. Wo Chen, as you know, physically defensive as it is, as much as it lowers the you know, attack stats of everything, it doesn't want to have to take a play rough. I have eaten a play rough with my Wo Chen, and it wasn't enjoyable. Chen Pao lowers everything's defense around it, so it makes things more susceptible of getting KO'd by uh, Aqua Jet in the rain, or a Liquidation, or a play rough, or an Ice Spinner from Azu, because they build a huge power, obviously making it so as a sky-high attack stat. And finally, Chi Yu, poor little Chi Yu, it doesn't hit Azumarill too hard with anything because it resists both of its stabs and Azumarill can basically one-shot it with Aqua Jet because of how frail Chi Yu is. You'll notice that this team really doesn't struggle with the ruins because of the existence of Azumarill on Rain, uh, because they have Spirit Break Grimmsnarl to lower the special attack output uh, of the Chi Yu as well as just lowering the damage output of everything with dual screens. You'll notice that uh, the Iron Hands is running like an Iron Defense body press set which obviously like it doesn't really care about much like if, if there's a chi yu facing it and it's in the rain or behind screens it's not particularly scared of that thing so this why well, while i'll say it isn't like the greatest example of how to deal with runes obviously it got the result it needed it made day two and it was able to deal with runes despite not having runes on the team what i'm going to go with the prime example here uh of being able to deal with runes is actually going to be joe ux9 uh his team from the Fort Wayne regionals. Joe actually got second without a single Ruin on his team. And I think it's, I, I'm gonna say it's pretty easy to explain why. Uh, ruins, as valuable as they are, you have to keep in mind that they affect the whole field, including their partner. And while a Ruin can switch in, let's say you have like a Wo Chen and your Wo Chen can switch in. So Palafin does less damage with a you know, uh, a jet punch on like your partner Pokemon. Defensively, that's great. Ting Lu defensively can prevent things from getting KO'd with uh, Moonblast. Chan Pao can make, you know, extreme speeds hit harder and Chi Yu can make Moonblast hit harder. Like just those general effects. You don't actually really need them to win. 
I, it just being prepared to remove the Ruin from the field automatically makes the game an even playing field. Like, while they control the effect that's currently on the field and you don't have like a Ruin on your side of the field to counteract that effect, for example, having a, uh, a Chen Pao come in on Wo Chen to equalize it, it doesn't like make or break a game. And once again, you can just be very prepared to deal with these things. Joe's team is uniquely prepared to deal with Ruins. Uh, King Gambit is a Pokemon that doesn't particularly care about any Ruin, especially when it turns into a Flying type. Uh, as a Steel type, it doesn't care about Chen Pao unless it's running like Sacred Sword, uh, but it does care about Chi Yu, which, you know, obviously Chi Yu doesn't want to take a Terra Blast and the Assault Vest fixes this. Uh, Talonflame is able to burn uh, the Chen Pao's on the other side of the field. With proper speed control, Specs Fluttermane just annihilates literally every single Ruin, and that's why I think Specs Fluttermane is like, one of the highest used Pokemon in the format right now. Just Fluttermane being able to invalidate Ruins is like such a good thing for it. In fact, I think Fluttermane's one of the main reasons Ruins aren't like mandatory to win. Um, Iron Bundle, another speed control mon, and Garchomp, you know, cool metagame call. It's basically just like a faster uh, Great Tusk that doesn't have as strong of a single target attack. But yeah, like it, it is literally just, if you can come in on a Ruin Pokemon and get rid of it, you're fine. And you, what you'll notice, like the trend here is most teams don't have more than one ruin. A lot of teams just kind of have the one. Justin Tang's team has the Chen Pao. And while I will say Chen Pao is basically mandatory to making Dragapult do a single thing in this format, um, it, it, you can see like there are going to be games where the Chen Pao just doesn't show up. There are going to be games where you play uh, Fapcore, where it's just Fluttermane, Amoongus, Arcanine, and Palafin. Like that is a mode that happens in a lot of situations. And that core goes well into opposing balance, especially opposing balance with Ting Lu. Ting Lu is basically the most common um, ruinous Pokemon in this format. And being annihilated by Palafin, once again, makes it so like, okay, yeah, once the Ting Lu's gone, it's it's like gone. It's, it's not going to affect the field anymore. And I, I don't know, there are still going to be games where the Ting Lu isn't going to show up to a match. You see what I'm getting at here? It's very hard for a ruinous Pokemon to fit on a team with another ruinous Pokemon. Even like the teams that do well, there is like a bit of anti-synergy. You see Chi Yu and Ting Lu, their effects counter out, or counter, um, what am I trying to say? Counteract each other. They, they make it so neither effect is really active if both are on the field at the same time. Meaning that pretty much only one of them is ever gonna show up to a game in a lot of situations. Uh, I'm sure there are examples of the contrary, but you, you can see what, I, what I'm getting at here, right? Once the Pokemon is gone, or if the Pokemon doesn't show up at all, it's basically like it doesn't matter if you have a Ruin. Uh, other examples of this, you'll see that like, you know, Chen Pao or Chi Yu find themselves on Dondozo uh, Hyper Offense. Uh, we see more Ting Lu on Palafin, Arcanine, Amoongus, uh, Fluttermane Balance. We see a Chi Yu next to like Hyper Offense. And that's basically it. There's basically one Ruin per team, and it's pretty rare to see both. I, for a while, was running a uh, Ruin team that had both... Where is it? Uh, I'm just... I'm not going to bring it up, but it had both Ting Lu and Wo Chen on it. And I ended up dropping Ting Lu because I found it to be a waste of space on the team. I thought that Wo Chen did the job well enough, and I needed a more offensive option than Ting Lu on the team because having both of them didn't really work when I had to burn a tear on something else, and both of these dropped to Specs Fluttermane. Ting Lu less so than Wo Chen, but you get my point. But yeah... Uh, we're just going to go through uh, some other examples of teams that don't have ruins. If I could find the folder, there it is. Uh, these are all from day two of Fort Wayne, I, I believe. I, I kind of just pulled it up, and I'm assuming these are all day two. Yeah, th these are day two. Pretty sure. Uh, <laughs> Skylar Birdo's team. We see this is just like a sand offense team. Corviknight, Tyranitar, Great Tusk, King Gambit, Ronan Wash. It's like a sand uh, balance offense is the best way I would describe it. We see Booster Energy on the Fluttermane. That is uh, a Ruin Slayer. And we see King Gambit. Black Glasses King Gambit's been like really clutch in this format, especially with Terra Dark. And of course, Life Orb Great Tusk under Tailwind can basically one-shot every single Ruin. Tyranitar also doesn't care about any Ruin barring a Sacred Sword from uh, Chen Pao, which isn't the most common thing anyways. Uh, we see, I actually accidentally put Skylar's team here twice. Uh, Duncan's team. Similar uh, thing going on here. It is a uh, Palafin balance team with Amoongus, Pelipper, uh, Baxcalibur, uh, Palafin, uh, Iron Hands, and Fluttermane. Booster Energy on the Fluttermane has the option to Perish Song. You can get rid of like whatever ruins on the field, and all of a sudden, you know, your opponent, if their entire like archetype revolves around the ruin being the ruin like existing for their team, getting rid of that crucial piece makes it much easier for your team to function against them. 
But yeah, there are plenty of other examples within uh, the Fort Wayne results. If we actually scroll, like, is this still day one or? Yeah, this is still day two. So keep in mind, these are people who went seven and two on day one. We're just going to scroll until we see teams that don't have any ruins on them. So there was Skylar's team. We see Bobby Rochelle's team here. It's a mouse ape. Uh, it's a mouse ape team with a Terra Water, not Terra Water, with a Water uh, Paldean Tauros. You can see two fighting types able to deal with all the dark types pretty effectively, proper speed control, some redirection and uh, support. You have no issue versus ruinous Pokemons. Next, if we go a little bit further down, uh, there's Duncan's team again. Da, 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 da. Here it is. Uh, here's Graeme, I think it's pronounced it, Graeme Blakely's team. We take a look. It just seems to be a control team with Arcanine, Palafin, Amoongus, and... Uh, I kind of expected like Swords Dance Iron Hands, but yeah, we uh, we see uh, Assault Vest Iron Hands with uh, Leftovers, Make It Rain, Nasty Plot, uh, Golden Go, and Taunt on the uh, Gothitelle. So yeah, it's just heavy control, making sure that Ruins uh, ruins have to like switch in and switch out to really get anything done. Like they have to be on the field when they want to be and off the field when they don't want to be. And Gothitelle definitely is like a piece that can throw a wrench into that entire machine, making it so they can't really decide when they're on the field. They're going to be active, when they're active and Gothitelle decides when that is. Like, that's really cool. Uh, other things to take a look at here. This team also has no ruins. It's a sand offense team with Paldean Tauros, you know, uniquely able to go against ruins. Uh, and yeah, there's just like a lot here. There are plenty of options. There's a Braviary. There's no ruin on this team and there's a Braviary. Hold on. I heard about this. Sheer Force, Life Orb, Braviary, Terror Ghost, Brave Bird, Close Combat, Body Slam. Body Slam is insane. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. I'm going to say it. Uh, I think Regulation C is much flack. Sorry, that is my Outlook notification. I have things I do. Um, as, as, as much flack as Regulation C got at the beginning of the format, uh, and while it still is the beginning of the format, we know we've only had two tournaments on the same weekend, uh, as much flack as it got, it is probably about as balanced as uh, Regulation B or Series 2. I, I think it's fine. I think a lot of people overreacted to the to the introduction of these ruins, thinking that they were going to be necessary to win. But even at this first tournament, we got people doing phenomenally. Second place, uh, tons of day two results, without a single ruin on their team. These Pokemon aren't needed to win, uh, and they're mostly just a huge part of the game that influences how the metagame shaped, but you don't like need them. I don't know how else, I don't know how else to explain it, like what a good allegory to them is, because they're not comparable to the Tapus. In VGC 2017, you couldn't really get away with not having a Tapu. You needed con to control what uh, field effect there was, what terrain there was in the field. It, you don't really see that with the ruins here, which is really interesting. So I, I'm interested to see how these are going to be used going forward. I can tell you right now, let me see if I can find the team I locked in for the um, for the global challenge. I'm not gonna show you items and stuff, but da, 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 da. where is it? Hold on. Oh, I don't know what I just did, hold on. Houndstone, yeah, here. So this is the team that I locked in for Global Challenge. I'm not gonna show you items because I'm not streaming my run, but you can see I don't have a Ruin on the team. I just, I, I haven't had an issue playing against the Ruins. Palafin deals with a lot of them. Fluttermane deals with a lot of them. It's mainly just a, it's, you know, I'm gonna say it, it's a skill issue. It really is. So yeah, um, granted you have the tools to deal with things that are good in the game, which you already should. As a competitive player, you should be prepared to deal with the things that are common. You don't need to run the ruins, in my opinion. And I think that going forward, we're going to see less and less ruin usage on teams uh, as tournament results come in. Maybe we'll have some big metagame development where all of a sudden we find out that Wo Chen is our lord and savior and will defeat every Pokemon in the game. Uh, but until that day comes, I I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to stick to my prediction that ruinous usage is going to go down slightly and become just sort of like a normal Pokemon that while they're important to archetypes, they're not like necessary. So yeah. Uh, that's my thoughts. If you guys enjoyed this standpoint in time, do me a favor, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.